Hey everybody, welcome to Friday Fruit Clips. This is episode number nine, my weekly series where we push back and stand in opposition of those fruity false prophets and fruity false teachers. So I've got some pretty nice clips picked out for you today. So buckle up your fruity seatbelt. Here we go. All right, first up, we are going to focus on Rodney Howard Brown. Now, this man has turned church into a circus. He doesn't teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. He teaches feelings and experience and a whole bunch of non-biblical doctrine. So I'm going to play a montage, like I said, about two or three minutes long, and then we'll comment afterwards. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead run in you, the quicken your mortal body. My God, I feel fire. I feel fire in this place. I tell you that fire in this place is the fire of the Holy Ghost. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Come here. Come here. Come. Come here. Bring him. Bring them. Come here. Put him in the. Come here. Lock him in. Are we missing anybody? Where's Pastor Daniel? Yeah, Pastor Derek. My God. Get. Lock him in you. These are the pastors of this church. This is how we do business at the river. No problems. We don't have any problems. We have no problems here. <laughs> Woo. 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 Hey, pass it for time. Hey, shut it. Let the devil say it. Let the devil. The Lord told me to tell you all that you're stepping up to another level. So this is Rodney Howard Brown, as he does his best Ed Sullivan imitation. We've got a really big shoe for you tonight. Um, this is a typical service for Rodney Howard Brown. In this particular clip that I'm closing this segment up with, he walked around for about 15 minutes and never spoke a word. Or if he did, I apologize, but it was very few words. And it's my opinion that he was walking around uh, imparting the Kundalini spirit. Because the way that these people are behaving is not normal. It's not of God. There is no sober-mindedness. Look at this guy. No sober-mindedness here at all. There's no order. It's all chaos and laughter and behaving foolishly and uh this is what he's done look he's just walking and standing and people begin to laugh and act a fool and it is 
unholy. It's very scary, creepy, disturbing. And, and again, I know I've said this, but these are grown men and grown women. No gospel being preached. No death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is pure silliness. And it's witchcraft. And it's unholy. Very disturbing. Uh, stay away from this man. We go to the book of Galatians, chapter 5. We can scroll down. Start in verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Verse 23. Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. The Greek word for temperance there is eng. Pratia, and pratia, and it means self-control. So what you just saw with Rodney Howard Brown, did any of that, or could you apply any of this to any of that? And the answer is no. That whole thing is out of control. Those people displayed zero self-control. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, if we scroll down, we can see when Paul talking about tongues and prophecy and uh, things having to do with spiritual. Look how he closes it out in verse 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. What you just witnessed with Rodney Howard Brown was the opposite of that. It wasn't done decently and it was completely out of order. All right, next up we've got a clip from Jesse Duplantis, and I wanted to show this clip to just further expose uh, this man as being one of the greatest modern-day blasphemers of our holy God that I've ever seen in my entire life. And this clip is very disturbing. And again, the reason I want to play this is to point out to you that not only is he blasphemous beyond any reason. He is also inappropriate in full view of the public. This is a horrible, horrible man. Uh, is Mary here? Mary. Mary's my executive secretary. Come, Mary. Mary's been with me 20 years. This is Roy. Roy, would you hand on? This is Roy's wife. Come, 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 come out there. In other words, if you call me and you get a hold of me, you're going to get to Mary. If you get to Mary, you got up pretty high on the totem pole. Now watch this. Now Mary worked for what, 20 years? You know, we, and we kind of treat Mary like our daughter, you know? But see, she works for Jesse the Plants Ministries. This is how God sees me and Mary. Why? She's part of my ministry. Walk with me, Mary. Wherever she goes, I go. Why? It's the way it's supposed to be. Why? She works for me. That means she works for me when she's not working for me. She's a representative of me. Thank you, Mary. You understand what I'm saying? All right, so my first question is, for what purpose did he feel it necessary to call up in front of everyone another man's wife and wrap his chubby, bloated arms around, well, yes, another man's wife, while he presses his body upon her from behind? Well, what was this done for? Well, I think we know the answer. This is perversion. But even for those that might disagree with me, what did this demonstrate? How did this help anyone's faith? It's stunning. This was outrageously inappropriate. This was Jesse wanting to demonstrate to the world that, well, I can do whatever I want to whomever I want, even to the public violation of another man's wife right in front of him and to the millions who will watch this online. Now, ask yourself this. Why didn't he do this to, well, let's say one of his man employees? Why not a man? Well, I think we know the answer. Now, surely he didn't have to pick Mary here and just look at her. She is absolutely uncomfortable it's clear you can look at her face and see that but he didn't have to pick mary he could have picked well let's say steve from accounting why didn't he pick steve from accounting you think jesse would have wrapped his hobbit arms around steve and walked up and down in front of everybody while his 
body pressed up against Steve awkwardly. Now, remember, he also said at the beginning, well, you know, we think of Mary as a daughter. So somehow that makes this okay. Don't have impure thoughts. Don't look at the way I've positioned my arms and my hands. No, no, no. Mary's just a daughter. You're going to do this with your daughter, your adult daughter? You're going to grind up behind her and walk, make her walk in front of you while you inappropriately hold your hands around her? Again, just atrocious. This man is unspeakable. I'm going to say one more thing as I close this segment. How do you think Mary's husband felt as this old broken pervert groped his wife right in front of him and in front of the world? Honestly, I don't know how he sat there in his seat while this assault happened. Certainly pray for this couple, Mary and her husband. Because I can tell you, I, I wouldn't have sat there. There's not enough money in the world that would have prevented me from protecting my wife from a full-on assault by any man at any time. This is absolutely bananas. All right, this next clip that I'm going to show you, I originally saw on Brother's channel, Matthew 715. So I want to give a shout out to him. Not trying to take uh, his content. I think he would agree, because we all do agree, uh, those of us that do this, that the more exposure we give to these frauds, the better. All right, for those of you that don't know who Manuel Johnson is, he is the, <laughs> the time-traveling prophet. Yes, he travels through time. And before you laugh with me, sadly, he's convinced uh, the majority of his followers, they actually believe that he is indeed a time traveler. So that's his shtick. But he's about to tell you a just a dumpster fire of a story. But it contains just blasphemy. And we'll point all this out with great specificity at the end. So listen to this guy. Watch his lack of acting skills. And here we go. One morning, a few years back, a few years back, I was got up in the morning and early in the morning to pray, to pray. And, and I went to the Topanga Canyon, California mountains to pray. Early, Steve, Sunday morning, early. It was dark. And I was praying and praying. And this is what I've never told anyone globally. As I was praying on the mountain, I heard tears. I wasn't crying. I'm praying. I heard tears. I heard, you know, little wimping tears from a man. And it's like, who's crying? I'm the only one up here. Just me and the Lord. Who, who is this? And it was Jesus. He was literally crying. I'm telling you, Jesus has tears. He wow. was crying. And I'm like, what's wrong, Lord? What's, what's wrong, wrong, Lord? He said, even right now as I'm talking, I, I could feel it. He said, my people are going to gather around the world. But he said, Manuel, they're not, they're not chasing after me. They're not mm. chasing, they're chasing after other things. Mm. He said, they're going to gather, but they're not hungry for me. They're, they're, they're not chasing after me. And at that moment, I didn't know what to say. I, I'm like, and I, I, and I remember my words as I responded. I said, I said, Lord, I love you and I want you. Mm. And I don't ever want you to leave me. I, and I said it to the Lord. I said, Lord, I love you. And I and I appreciate you. And, I, and I'm chasing after you. And right at that moment when I said this, the, 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 the tears stopped. And he said, the Lord responded to him. He says, thank you. Thank you. 
And I realized at that moment, at all my years of walking with the Lord, that the Lord needs our love. I'm, I know there's theology out there that says, oh, the Lord doesn't need it. This is not true. All right, we're going to interrupt Captain Time Traveler here. We're in the book of Acts, chapter 17. Let's start in verse 24. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything. God does not need anything. Jesus does not need anything. So for Emmanuel to say, uh, he called it theology, but make no mistake, he's arguing against doctrine. The Bible clearly tells us that God doesn't need anything, but Emmanuel wants to tell you, no, the Bible's wrong. Jesus needs something, and it's just blasphemy. I'm serious, saints. This is not, he didn't create us because he didn't need us. He created us because he needed us. He wanted to start a kingdom family, a family. Wow. You see, the angels are his servants. They're not his family. You and I, we're his family. And he loves us. And saints, I'm telling you, I have never ever experienced that. What the Lord showed me how much he needed our love and he needed my love. And that because my heart spoke out to him, not my mind, my heart spoke out to him. He was, the Lord was, was blessed. He was mm. blessed. I could have given a million dollars. It was, it was, it was nothing. He was blessed to see one of his creations reach out to him to say, I really love you without a motive behind it. Without, you know, incentives and things. It was pure when I was asking. All I wanted was wow. him. All I wow. wanted was him, Steve. I, all I wanted was just to be with him. You know, that's all I wanted. It was like an Enoch experience. Yeah. When you're walking with God, well, it's just you and God. You're not putting 10,000 requests there. And Manuel, you said, I saw in your notes that you said, it was heal. It, it was as if it was healing to him. Yes, yes. Because that Jesus, was crazy. I never Jesus, thought of that. Saints, Jesus hurts. Now, make sure that you stay tuned for my list here at the end. But I, I had to interrupt here. This man is actually saying, if you can believe what your ears heard, that it was healing. His words were healing to Jesus Christ. And, and if your jaw is on the desk, it's understandable. The arrogance that these false prophets and these false teachers possess, where they've turned Jesus Christ into a groveling, weak, ordinary guy, and it's... In many cases, because Manuel is not alone in telling stories like this, where it's the prophets that are comforting Jesus, that, you know, Jesus is just blubbering and, you know, he's hear these stories that it's the prophets to the rescue. They're coming to save the Savior. And they've caused Jesus to stop crying and comforted him, comforted him and here healed Jesus. Again, the arrogance and the conceitedness is just off the scale. This is blasphemy. It is all things unholy. I shudder for this man. I genuinely tremble for what he will hear on Judgment Day as he tells this absolute blasphemous story from the vain imaginations of his own heart. It is incredible to witness this in our time. And then after that time, I was going down from the mountain, just in awe, just in awe of what just happened to me. And the voice comes. He says, my son, Go get our bike. He said, our bike. Go get, 
go get our bike. Not your bike, because this is not so it wasn't just about me. He says, go get our bike. Wow. And Steve, I just broke down. I just broke down right there at the foot of the mountain. I just broke down. Go get our bike. So for those of you who are sobbing at your computer right now, they're there. I know this is an emotional story of triumph and overcoming, sacrifice, suffering, and anguish. And I know that you feel for Dr. Manuel Johnson. So take take comfort in my words. <laughs> this is so utterly ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> I am so I'm still a little bit sick, so I can't laugh or I'm going to really hurt my lungs here. But this is Manuel Johnson and and for the life of me, I don't know how this works, but apparently it does. He's telling this tale of, well, because I guess Manuel comforted Jesus in the, in the, with his words, and he ministered to Jesus. Uh, Jesus is rewarding him by giving him permission to go ahead, take your donation money, and go per <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to laugh. Go per purchase a, a BMW sports bike because you, you've earned it. And, and this is, again, a, a tale of such triumph, and it's just beautiful. It wasn't the story of bringing people to Christ. It wasn't a story of sharing what Jesus did for us. It was a story of Manuel Johnson comforting Jesus, and thus being rewarded with material things. And this is what the West has come to as he sits there. Look, look at his face covered with his hands while he fake cries because this is supposed to be just an amazing story. It's crazy, it's cringe, and I can't even... What do you, what, Lord, go get our bike? Yes. Yeah. And when the Lord directed me to the bike, it's a BMW. He was there from the whole process of purchasing it. And when he, when he rode on that bike, that was, I thought the mountain experience was great. And then when he rode on the bike, on the back of that bike with me. Oh my God, that was that was a greater opportunity. And I've said this before. It was a greater opportunity than my, than my visitations to heaven. Yeah, because, you had said that. You said yeah. that it meant more to you. Yes, it was more profound yes. a visitation than actually your trip to heaven mm -hmm. to be with the Lord when He re rode on the back of your bike. All right. So try to comprehend what you just heard there. Uh, Manuel says that he had a better time riding his motorcycle with Jesus on the back, of course, uh, than his alleged trip to heaven. Now, for those of you that don't know, Manuel has claimed that he has been to heaven. And he has a couple of videos on that. But he says that he had a better time riding his motorcycle here on earth with Jesus on the back than actually going into heaven. Now, firstly, we know that Manuel has never gone to heaven. He's a liar. Even before this blasphemous lying story, we know that he's not been to heaven. And this fake story can only really confir confirm this because any man who says that they had a better time here on earth riding a motorcycle than going to heaven unequivocally proves that he's not only not been to heaven, but it also proves that he doesn't follow Jesus Christ in truth at all. I, I can't imagine saying such a thing. He tries to say, well, because it just meant more because, you know, Jesus is my bro. And, you know, bros go, uh, we go riding bikes together, man. Uh, it, it's just so silly, isn't it? Uh, and, and again, it, it, the, the, that's, these prophets, they always want to just degrade Jesus. And Manuel's no different here. He again degrades Jesus.
to just being this average dude, you know, with an earthly desire to just hang out with the bros and ride motorcycles through the mountains. It is just so degrading. They bring Jesus down to this level of just this average guy who has earthly desires. And yeah, it's much more fun down here on earth on motorcycles than it is to go into actual heaven. It's, again, more blasphemy. And sadly, the people believe it. It's so sad. That was more it was wonderful more, to you. Because the Lord loves coming down to earth, fellowshipping with us saints. He loves it. And in Florida, a gentleman said, I have something for you. And I've only mentioned, it's not on Facebook. It's not on anything. My bike, my outfit. BMW has different models, and they're known for the boxer. So most people would think I have a boxer. How could this artist, this Christian artist, be under that anointing to the point to where they're describing, they painted my jacket, and they gave me the sports bike. I have a sports BMW. Wow. How could he possibly have known that? How could he have possibly known that the day that Jesus, that when he manifested on my bike, that he was wearing white. I knew he was wearing white. I knew that he was hanging on the knee, enjoying it. And we were having a great time. It's amazing. You can show that photo right now. Yeah, go over it. Not that one. Oh, the uh, no. bike one, right? Not no, that, that's yeah, right it. there. That's it. Wow. That's <laughs> so here it is, guy. <laughs> Whoopsies. Cough got away from me there. I was laughing pretty hard. It was a real laugh, though. <laughs> That's a fake laugh. <laughs> it's real. That's it. So this guy gives you, this gentleman. <laughs> yes. All right, let's just stop this nonsense. I think we've all had enough of this ridiculousness. Now, as painful as that was to watch, I did take the opportunity to summarize everything that uh, Manuel told us throughout that. Number one, he said that Jesus was crying little wimpy tears. Nothing wrong with that. Number two, that Manuel comforted Jesus. And number three, Jesus Christ thanked him. Number four, he said that Jesus Christ needs our love. Number five, says that the Bible, specifically in Acts 17, that scripture is not true. God does need stuff. Number six, Manuel's words healed Jesus. Just let that sink in. Number seven, Jesus Christ rewards Manuel and tells him, go get our bike. Notice how because he brought Jesus into it, it just doesn't seem as bad. If people accuse, you know, Manuel of misappropriating uh, donations, uh, he'll just say, hey, it was not my idea. It was Jesus's idea. You can go talk to him. See how that works? <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Oh my goodness, this is really, this has been something, I'm sorry. Number eight, uh, he says, bike ride with Jesus was better than all his so-called visitations to heaven. Number nine, note that it's manual in the driver's seat and Jesus is the passenger, right? Because that's an authority position. Jesus would not drive the bike. Uh, number 10, neither, this is just for comedy only. Neither Manuel or Jesus are wearing protective helmets or protective eyewear. Why not round it off with a silly one? And, uh, you know, again, oh, please, if you are following these false prophets, these false teachers, please consider what you saw here with Manuel today. Uh, fake stories, fake tears, fake acting, uh, fake pictures fake tales of how Jesus wants you to have a motorcycle. It just, it never stops. And uh, this is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come back to the truth of Jesus Christ as found in our Holy Scripture and be sober-minded. All right, next up we've got Hank Kuhneman, a confirmed false prophet who indeed prophesied that Donald Trump would win the 2020 presidential election. Now, I was fortunate enough to get my hands on a pretty hard-to-find video. This is from around December of 2020, about a month after the presidential elections. 
And uh, so because Hank Kuhneman is a confirmed false prophet, we want to remind the people that he is just that, a false prophet. We're going to listen to some clips where he falsely prophesies Donald Trump's comeback victory. So as we listen to some clips here, he's in the midst of a prophecy. So let's listen. We release the Royal Guard to shred every attempt to steal, kill, or destroy concerning this nation and its election. So you heard it. He's prophesying right now. And he says, well, he releases the Royal Guard because, you know, he has the authority to do that. But he is indeed prophesying about the election. You heard it from his own lips. So this is the subject of matter here as he is doing his prophecy. Now, Kuhneman is probably, if not the most charismatic false prophet out there. And he does not ever shy away from an opportunity to prove this. Very dramatic. And as he sets the atmosphere, like he always does, He's got the music playing, looking like the casino boss. He's whatever this hypnotic stuff is going on, in the big screen in the background. Uh, he's going to lash out here at, at those who called him out for being a false prophet. But just watch how dramatic he is. They have mocked my prophets. They have accused my prophets falsely. And yet, they side with the false narratives that are being spoken. Well, on both those points, well, he's right about one of them. We have mocked him. He is not a prophet of God, however, a false prophet. Then he is. But we have not falsely accused him. This man, uh, even before this, he prophesied Trump was going to be elected president, and he wasn't. So he's pretending like right now God is speaking through him, but uh, this is all coming from his own personal opinion, the vain imaginations of his own heart, let's just put it like that. But isn't he dramatic? When I played that clip, there was literally, I believe, about 12 seconds of just dead silence. Very charismatic. I say this because the Lord of the heavens mocks at the attempts and agenda to think that fraud shall steal my nation from my hands. For this is not fraud, it is crime. And it is time for righteousness to reign upon your land and truth to prevail, says the Spirit of God. Therefore, I am not paying attention to your electoral calendars, certification calendars and timelines, and nor am I even considering January dates. I have considered my time and it shall stand. And at the right moment, I will move my hand and things will open. But watch these next two weeks. It shall be shocking and awe that I may bring a December that you will remember. But I will bring justice this January. And I will bring the sound of celebration and freedom. March of this year. You will see 2021 shall be the year of your victory and of your celebration. Says the living God. Lift up your voice and rejoice. So again, there simply is no mistaking what this fraud uttered back in December of 2020. You heard it. He said this was going to be shock and awe. He said it would be a December to remember, a January of justice, and that no matter what, 2021 was going to bring victory. 
this man is a false prophet. Why don't you greet somebody, tell them, say, I am so glad that you are here today. And uh, declare victory. 2021, W-O-N, 2021. So again, I wanted to add this on this week's episode of Friday Fruit Clips because we must never let these false prophets forget that they are false prophets. I don't care how long ago this was. False prophets, especially like Hank Kuhneman, unrepentant false prophets uh, need to be reminded that there are those of us out here who will hold them to the biblical standard and call them out for the liars that they are. They make their livings lying in the name of Jesus Christ, and it's atrocious. The followers, sadly, give them a pass because they're in it for the entertainment. Look at what we just watched here. This is supposed to be a church, but Hank Kuhneman is doing his fake prophecy on politics. It has nothing to do, again, and I know I say this often, but it has nothing to do with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with salvation. This has everything to do with Christian nationalism. It has to do with getting Donald Trump back into that Oval Office. And it's very sad. So we want to make sure that we continue to stand in opposition. Certainly pray for everybody that I showed you here today. Pray for them. Pray that they would repent and come to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and abide in his doctrine. How important is doctrine? Stay with me really quickly. Deuteronomy 18, verses 20 through 22. But the prophet which shall presume, presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is a thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Is this not doctrine? Is this not doctrine of God Almighty? Now, follow me here. I'll do this in real time. If we come over to... Oops. Second John in chapter 1. What does the Bible say about doctrine? Verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. To let a false prophet slide and to not biblically reject him, as you just read in Deuteronomy 18, is to not abide in the doctrine of Christ. In the book of John, chapter 17, when Jesus is praying for his disciples to the Father, look what he says. Verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. A false prophet certainly demonstrates that they are not sanctified in the truth. It's that simple. So with that, we are going to wrap up this week's episode of Friday Fruit Clips. Thanks for sticking with me. And again, pray for these false prophets. Pray for the followers to awaken out of this very strong delusion. Serve Jesus Christ in truth and sincerity, sober-mindedness and in spirit. Until next time, God bless.